Welcome to Heart to Heart, our chat with the cast and crew of When Calls the Heart. I'm Jen Young and I'm from Seattle, Washington, and I'm joined today by Jim McDonald. I'm an admin from Ontario. And Marg Stark, I'm an admin from San Diego, California. And we are here to recap episode five with Mr. John Tinker. Oh boy, we're almost halfway Yay. through the season. It goes by so fast. It does. Crazy. It does. Crazy. It does. But before we dive into all of the questions, um, your wife, Rhonda, put in her newsletter that you've been caring for your horse, Charlie, who's been sick. Is he doing okay? I, we don't know. I, we have a, a terrific vet who came by and, and uh, listened to Charlie's heart, and he has a murmur. Who would have thought? Oh, Charlie. Oh, is that no, Charlie that, behind you? That is Charlie. Okay. He, he's not that old. <laughs> and, and, he's, and he's not, his, his original name is when we got him was Skips Fancy Enough. But, but because this was a gift from my wife, she allowed me to name him. And I named him after my great, great grandfather, Charlie. So it's not a Charlie horse pun. Um, and then over, <laughs> here, over there next to is, is another horse, Rondi, R O. And D Y, not Rhonda, but Rondi, um, named after one of General Ulysses S. Grant's horses. But I don't talk that loud around here about the North. Um, now living in the South. Okay, good. Uh, but two wonderful horses, and and to answer your question, we hope so. Um, we're we're feeding him a lot. He he was suddenly looking rather malnourished. I I, I think it may be a ploy just to get some more sweet feed. <laughs> Okay, but he did he, uh, he just he's a sweet horse and 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 you all have horses right who, who said they had no. horses someone said I, they had a horse i am a horse lover and i've been riding since i was a little girl but not much horse country up in seattle Do you still ride oh yeah like i said i'm a huge horse lover and um i've been loving how much horses have been featured in season nine um can you tell us a little bit about how it's how it goes writing a script that has so many horses and people riding and all that kind of stuff? Well, first of all, uh, I can tell you that we take it for granted. It's far easier to write and, and not think about all that goes into it. You know, whether you're having a horse do a trick, um, such as bowing as, as the way Newton did in the previous episode, or, or uh, uh, excuse me, Sergeant, or Newton in the stall in, in a few episodes after he was hit backing away and acting. Those are all things that are so easy to write on the page. And then we take for granted that Jamie Payton needs to either teach a horse, someone needs to teach the horse how to do that, or they have to find a, a double that, that can do the trick. Sometimes he knows horses that can do the trick and they, they, they sub them, they swap them in or out. Um, and we also have specific horses for the for the actors. Um, I think Allie rides one. I think that's called Buttercup. But they're Aww. beautiful horses, all to, all Thank really God. well taken care of. And and it's it's really a pleasure to to write about them. Um, and, and unfortunately, we had an accident this year on the set, and the first in a in a very long time. And it I don't know that it was a first ever for the show, but um, thankfully horse and rider Jamie Payton were okay um, but it, it really shook folks up and again it goes toward you you take for granted these are big animals you know that they're, they're thousands of pounds and 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 you know Peter Deloise when when you talk to Peter um, he he doesn't say action or there's something that he does differently around the horses because otherwise you spook them and they get going oh. when you're really oh, wow. only trying to give the actors their cue so it's it's a very specific thing that, as I said, in the writers' room, it's it's far too easy to take for granted. But Jamie Payton and the rest of our folks are are terrific, and we usually can find a way to do something. So cool. Well, let's just jump ahead there um, and talk about Sergeant's Bow. How did that come about? I just think it's so cool that you know we've seen pictures of you know the some some of Jack's drawings in. Um, Little Jack's room, you know, it's just, but I would think that's fairly unusual for a TV show to honor, you know, a, a very beloved, you know, cast. Well, we're an unusual TV show. Well, right? we are, we are, but tell me we're about not your how usual that, pair. 
Yeah. Did you write it first and then find out whether Jamie could pull it off with the horses or what? Tell no, us we about wrote it. how it we, came about. We'll always write it. And, okay. and uh, but but not typically issue the script with it in it. We'll give him a heads up. And, and it's usually just a phone call and, and he'll tell us that he can do it. He can't do it or he'll work on it. And we just thought it would be, again, less about Sargent, though. It's it's fun because Sargent has real character. And it's our it's our one um, uh, sort of physical, almost sentient being that that connects us to Jack, and and it was really a moment about Elizabeth and Jack. And what I I, I just love that there's a connection there that that Nathan asks and she yeah. answers and says it's Jack. And um, you know it was also important the way. Aaron played it. I, I appreciated the way Aaron played it. You could see there was some melancholy there, but she wasn't that, she wasn't weepy. You know, she's gotten over a right. lot of it and, and she can talk about him in a, in a very different way now, uh, now that she's gotten down the road and, and time has done some healing. So yes. uh, we just thought it was a little moment, but it, it means so much. And I think that's when you can find those minor moments that become sort of major themes, it's, it's a lot of fun. And and that theme of keeping Jack's memory alive, whether it's um, with with Lucas, Elizabeth, Nathan, or or obviously little Jack as he grows older, yes. that's important. Yes, it's something we're super fiercely protective of in the Facebook group too. We just never want these loves compared because they're really distinct. You know, the love that is developing with Lucas is very different than the love that she had no more no less it's just different you know and uh, wonderfully our hearts have the ability to expand and we can have many different kinds of love stories so we always try to sort of protect jack's memory and their love story um so i think it really plucked hardy's oh, heartstrings too yeah good. yeah do you guys approach it that way too as distinct love stories yeah I, I think that's a good way to put it. Um, totally know, different characters and yeah, the way and that times Luke, and yeah. Lucas and, uh, and Elizabeth relationship unfolded. Um, yeah. It also has to do with, you know, Daniel Lissing and, and Aaron Krako. I'm not going to speak for them, but it sure seemed they had a very specific chemistry. And, and if you're writing well for those actors, whether it's Aaron and, and Daniel or others, you get to know them a little better, what their strengths are and who has chemistry with whom. Um, and and conversely, there are times when it's fun to put two folks who may not have at least uh, obvious chemistry up front, and you try and find it with them. And it's fun for them because they're playing scenes with other actors, with fellow actors they don't normally get to play with. So yeah, I love that. So I think there was universal adoration of this episode. I I, I think this episode. That's, that's fantastic. It, it just seemed to have something for everyone in between Allie calling Nathan her dad for the first time in the swing that Joseph had built to the, you know, action of the race to the almost really like vows romantic line, should we marry between Elizabeth and Lucas at the end? And then, you know, the creme de la creme this incredibly complex and beautiful scene with the Canfields and and Mr. Landis Marianne Sell of Cincinnati wants to know what your favorite scene of the night was I know this is going to seem inconsequential and maybe it's just I just Joseph is so often the one to be giving good advice I just like that very brief moment where he says to his wife I want to apologize because uh, I, and he was the one who had been saying, got to look forward, can't think about the past. And, and quite by accident, uh, though it's that moment isn't explored, he found himself, you know, he found his least good self in a moment of weakness and his wife showed him a better way. And he acknowledged that. Wow. I, just, I, I like that. Um, I, I like that. He's just not always the sage and he doesn't always have the answers. And I, but I gotta admit, uh, there is something about Viv and Natasha and the, and the kids as well. But I just love the family. I really love the family, and and um, 
to to take nothing from the other actors and the other characters. I just always want a little more time with the with the Canfields. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I think they're lovely. And, no, and understandably so. A, a, understandably. A not all about the writing. It's they just have lovely interaction. It's it's gentle. It's it's strong. It's got great integrity. Um, they have a great sense of humor. They can they can rib each other, and it's just fabulous. I, I really like them. And and again, it's not so much even about the writing. It's just about those actors and and how they play the part. And uh, by the way, speaking of actors, Jada came up. The the line about it hides your smile, your mustache. Want you know. That was her line. She call, they called from the set and it was an absolutely good call to make. They called from the set and it was her suggestion to say it, hide your smile. So wow, Jada. The, that, Love yeah, that. It's great. And and that that happens not infrequently um, with actors when they find just a little, there's just a little hole in the in the dialogue or in the story, and they'll fill it in. Um, Lee, I shouldn't say Lee and Rosemary. Uh, Kevin and, and Pascal are really good at that. They'll, they'll, they just a little, if there's a little gap in some, some logic or just a little something that can make a situation more clear, they'll add it in. They're infamous for that. And I, Fantastic. Well, and I, I think it's cool that, you know, there were a lot of big moments, obviously. Um, and I think it's nice to find little moments to attach to, too. And I think it's that's so why that, the Hardys you know? have to keep watching over and over again because there's so much. There's so much. There is a lot, but it's so funny. My, I was watching with my wife, and I uh, the first act came to an end, and I thought, oh, there's nothing going on. And then it, and then I don't know if that was me or not, but then it took off um, in acts two through five. So um, may have just been me. Yeah, I think there was a lot there. A lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> Teresa Toy from Batesville, Arkansas, asked if Highland's ho, ho, ho was improvised uh, on Twitter. It, um, Jeanette Stevens joked that it was very on brand of Hallmark. It was. <laughs> uh, he did it all himself. And, and Aaron, uh, you know, being the uh, professional that she is, she picked right up on it. I don't know if, if it was in the cut or if you could hear it, but he says, ho, ho, ho. And she says, oh, ho, ho, ho. Now we're playing pirates. Oh, whoa. And they just did it. And it was, I thought it was so sweet. It was darling. <laughs> it was. And, well, the, and you tell that was an optical butterfly? Yes, I, mean, I could tell it was an optical butterfly. Oh, cut it out. I've spoiled it for everyone. It was beautiful, though. Well, wait, the first shot of the butterfly was not. It's the one. The butterflies flying. were harmed in the filming of that episode. <laughs> Wait, so the, they were the all they, 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 yeah, they're all yeah, optical? They were, well, the one on the leave, probably the one on the blade of grass wasn't, but yes, Neil right. Friendly and, and Heather Nevin in post. Um, fixed oh, it no, up. it was beautiful. But it's it's fun. That's Very fun. cool. <laughs> Debbie Quig, Twig Barrel commented, awesome, awesome writing this week. That it was so good for her soul. We know that director Peter Deloise wrote this episode. Uh, tell us how Peter came about yes. writing this one. Oh my gosh, he's just so annoying. He just, can I write, can I write, can I write, can I write? <laughs> Peter, can I write, can I write, please? Can I write? <laughs> That's awesome. You know, he's, he really, he's really quite talented. He's, he's hysterically funny. He's an actor, he's a writer. He does, a, he does a lot of stuff. Um, how he is at home, you'll have to ask his wife. She's lovely <laughs> to put up with him. Um, but, uh, you know, I just thought it was, um, another voice works in the writer's room, a different voice. And, and actually there's a question coming up, I think that, that addresses that. So I'll keep that until later about writers and their voices. But, you know, he has a distinct voice and a distinct take on life. Um, and, 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 and again, he's, he's contributed so much and I'm, I talk about something that, that works out. Have you interviewed him yet, Mark? We're going to this week. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, talk about things like calling up and saying it hides your smile. And it, I don't quite know how this came about, but, but I'm going to reveal here, Peter is responsible for Highland's buddy. And I think it goes back to Peter's own life, but you'll have to ask him the story, but it just happened on the set. It was buddy, right, buddy, buddy. And that's, and it's a, and it's just such a great little hook. It's, it's fabulous. 
oh that it's gosh. I just love it that these two it says so much about Jack's uh, little Jack's and Lucas's relationship so uh, you know being in the writer's room even if your name isn't on the script um we all give and take and 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 then on the set there's still give and take and it's a collaborative process and it's a, a it's a very fun collaborative process so everyone contributing in a major way and um I just thought he did a great job. So uh, we're really curious about the storm. Um, it was the backdrop for a number of scenes, uh, you know, the very um, sad and moment in which, you know, Rosie's questioning whether Lee might have had a flirtation with someone. And then it's the backdrop for Elizabeth saying that she hopes her son feels safe. So then that kind of raises our eyebrows about Jack's safety. Um, and then of course, it's the downpour that Mr. Landis is walking around in <laughs> when the Canfields think he isn't coming. Um, so tell us about that storm and what, you know, from a storytelling standpoint, what, what that was for. It was just sheer manipulation by, you know, a storytelling. We needed some, it began with, why is he going to stick around? Why is he going to at all want to have dinner? And, okay, I see. And that's really how it started. So the and, bad weather to keep Landis in town. And it's one of those surprises that you then realize how it's going to impact and ripple across all the other things. And, and it really works. And there are plenty of times when you when you do those things and you you need some sort of device and it and it just really throws a wrench in the works. But that's one of the, this was one of those times where it just worked across the board, and I just love the idea that Landis got went the wrong way around to get to the <laughs> house and was drenched, and he has to change out of his clothes. And he, he, he's a lovely actor. Uh, um, I'd like to see Mr. Landis come back. Yeah, they spoke very highly of him um, when we. We're talked fortunate. We have we have a great cast, but but. We've, we've been blessed with really good actors who come in and, and, and guest on this show, really good actors. Well, it's just so funny because Vancouver, you're usually dealing with way too much rain and then you needed to introduce some more rain. <laughs> right. Well, it's funny, it, 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 the scene where, where they're standing outside the schoolhouse and she actually invites Landis to come over and there's a storm coming in. There's, there's, it's not a cloud in the sky. So that you can only do so much, but then, Actually, when the carriage rolls up and Fiona's asleep in the carriage, it does look a little as though it's getting darker. And then, yeah. of course, the optical sky with the storm rolling in. Love it. So um, don't hold me back, Mr. Landis, was kind of the huge pivotal line of the episode. Um, it was a turning point in both the story and in the music. Um, so tell us about John Serrata's role in... That's I'm not going to weep the way you made Brian weep. <laughs> Honestly, we did. It was so good. It was beautiful. It was so good. Well, again, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, to the actors and 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 to John Serrata, I I have such a good time with John Serrata, and I think John and I are going to be talking later on, Mark, next at the end of this month. Yes. But, um, and so we can talk more then, but just briefly, I've learned about, I, he's taught me so much about storytelling and and he's he's a wonderful human being. Uh, I've gotten to know him while working with him and I really enjoy working with him. And um, he's also taught me, I take music like the, the livestock in the show for granted. And I don't mean to lump him in with a, but, <laughs> really it takes so much time to do to even just that little simple thing that looks easy uh with can with landis and and uh, angela playing piano you you, you got to get hand doubles you got to get music ready for the set you got to and then when you edit it it all gets gets out of time and it's a very um specific element to a show that is very important to the show and and we'll talk more when john can speak for himself but I just, uh, I, I can't say enough good things about him when we get together, I'll say the bad. But the good things, he's so talented and, and he's been doing this for, you know, nine seasons. And he still is adding new things in the, in the motorcycle race. He, he has guitar and stuff. And he, that was a really fun cue. And yes. again, all on his own. 
And I don't know how he comes up with the things, but uh, he, he does. And he, I don't find him repeating himself unnecessarily. There are themes and things which, which are, are wonderful and, and comforting and reassuring as they come rolling around. And uh, one thing we should talk about, and I'll finish, I'll close my mouth after this about this topic, but someone keeps telling me there's a Jack's theme uh, and, and, and at, the, at least John Serrat is understanding, there's no Jack theme, but I, I, I think we'll wait and tee it up, just leave it there. We gotta okay. get to the bottom of this mystery about a Jack we theme. We do, we must. Because, <laughs> Maybe John's gaslighting me. Maybe there is a Jack's theme and it's all supposed to be. I'm sure the Hardys will tell us. Yeah, they will. So Hardys, if you think there's a Jack's theme, please, please let us know if you've heard it. Yeah. They'll tell you the exact episodes. And scenes. John himself. All right. So switching gears a little bit. Um, I've got a daughter who is about well, kind of around Allie's age. And that scene where Faith and May Sue were treating her to a spa day. And it just, <clears throat> it did this mama's heart good. Talking about how beauty is on the inside and you don't need to be gooping your face up with makeup and fancy hair. Um, and it, tells, it, it takes a village to raise kids, especially well back then um, and, and even today. Um, so I can tell off. you, and this will surprise you, or may not surprise you, he's a very sensitive man who came up with that. Um, uh, that was Peter DeLuise, who oh, has a son. Nice. And it was Peter and, and, and Peter um, talking about beauty from the inside and not on the outside and whatever you apply only should enhance what you, um, what, what you have. And how Allie need not try and, Al need not try and uh, do anything other than just be herself if in, in fact she's trying to get uh, Robert's attention. Uh, I think there was, well, I interrupted myself, I think there was, there was a scene which we didn't even shoot where she talked to Robert, but, but those, are, those are difficult scenes to navigate, um, but we try and, and, and maybe not, we can give them more time as they grow up, but back then they would have really been in their formative years um, growing up much more quickly. Um, but I'm glad that that spoke to you and, and Peter, Peter can take all the credit for that. Oh, well, it's, it's done really well, really well. Oh, it's good. really clear that there's a number of women in town who are kind of stepping in to help, yeah, and I help Nathan. I, I love that. Yeah. I really like that. And, and, um, Gosh, has it been aired yet? I think it was maybe last year. Aaron did Aaron. Aaron says to Nathan, um, "Well, if you need help, oh no, it's coming up. If you need help, there are plenty of people. I mean, the idea of this community. I'd live in Hope Valley. Uh, the community of, of both men and women. Mm -hmm. Well, even back to our own childhoods, you know, you." It used to be that uh, if you went out in the neighborhood, you knew all eyes were on you. And whatever That's you right. did, your parents were going to know about it before you got home. I mean, now your neighbors don't even know who to call. But, um, you know, it, it was different. Definitely. It, it was different. Yeah. <laughs> on yeah. a completely different note, uh, Deborah Martin from Memphis, Tennessee asked, What's it mean to you to be able to introduce such beautiful lessons and draw upon faith and God in this series? It means <laughs> yeah. the world to me. I, I started to talk about the writer's room, you know, and this, this may be private, so I wanna protect privacy, but you know, we, we run the gamut from, you know, Bible believing Christians to an atheist. So there, you know, I, I think it's, it's, um, I never want to present, I'll just speak for myself. I never want to present just one side of a, a of an issue or a story. And if there's an, uh, another, uh, it's, it's one reason I love a, a diverse writer's room. Uh, I, I think that Derek and I and Beth and Allie and, and Peter all, all come from 
from very different backgrounds and approach life in different ways. And when they turn in their scripts, I love reading things that I never would have thought of or never would have written. I don't believe that, but I find it correct for the character and just as interesting as anything I might've written. Um, that's really fulfilling. And it's fulfilling, as I said, to be able to, to write those characters um, with stories that, that I hope uh, land with people. And, and you know, I, I have some corny aphorism about, and it's, it's, it's not that deep, but it's, if a, if a T, if, a, if we can be inspirational, educational, uh, uplifting, and, and even something else, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a, such a silly saw that I don't even remember what the fourth thing is, but if you can ring all those bells, uh, it, you're just doing it that much better by entertaining, and um, to be able to write about faith, I, frankly, I find there are fewer and fewer places where we can write about any given faith. And, and that's a little frustrating. And I'm thankful that Hallmark allows us, uh, neither encourages nor discourages us, but has not censored that kind of uh, faith-based um, exploration. And, and in fact, coming up in a couple of weeks, you know, we talk about the Jewish faith, which, which we find out that, that Ned is Jewish. Um, and, and he had somehow, for some reason, stopped celebrating Hanukkah, and he doesn't know why, but, he's, but, but Florence encourages him to celebrate it again, and, and, and it's important to, to, see, those, to see those different uh, um, people who live differently and, and to be aware of them and, and to treat them with respect. Um, I, I just, it means, anyway, speaking for myself, it means the world to me. Uh, I, it's part of who I am, and I have to uh, explore that. The um, uh, Crown Media had released a picture of uh, Ned with the um, celebrating, and uh, we've the, some Hardys who have seen it have been quite excited by that. So, boy, does Crown Media release a lot of photos, <laughs> <laughs> and way ahead of time, too. way ahead of time, way ahead of time. Yes, yeah. right. I don't. Uh, I thankfully I don't see too many of them. Maybe I'm just missing them. I don't see too many of them going wide, but but I will go and look at them, and and typically it's someone else who's alerted me. But uh, don't you want to be surprised? Don't you yes, want to we do. <laughs> journey getting there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we were all sitting. Speaking of surprise, <laughs> we were all sitting gobsmacked by what Lucas and Elizabeth had just said, you know, if we should marry to each other. And then whammo, we got a preview that was as unsettling as this episode was peaceful. So, you know, we were, oh, that was so lovely. You know, what? Um, it looks as though the coal mine might be reopening with all the right. that it represents for the town. What? <laughs> that comes right out. Rip our hearts out. <laughs> like um you know um i th i think it's going to be an interesting story to um revisit um because there's been so much change in the town and and a concerted effort by many to keep the town the way it is um, i i think i i reassured the audience that um we're not going to change too much but but change is afoot and or at least trying to make its way into Hope Valley in a way that I think would would spoil the way of life. And, and it certainly is not, specifically the opening of the coal mine is not anything that's gonna be pleasant for anyone in Hope Valley if that ever happens. Well, it has been lurking on the outskirts of town for nine seasons, right? So. I know, and people have gotten lost in there and there've been all kinds of stories. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we used to have Golden Girls used to come on right after When Calls the Boy. Heart. And that Did theme we, song and, was like, it's, it, it just jolted you. And, you know, we was, all and, want and, the show to last longer. But all respect time, to Andrew Gold. I, I think he wrote that song. It just, I have, it, it, it's a visceral thing now with me. It just, it's like <laughs> fingers and nails on a blackboard. And um, I was a little surprised. Again, Hallmark's, uh, it's up to Hallmark how they publicize the show. 
And, and without saying I agree or disagree, I, I honestly don't know what I would have done. Do you, do you, do you hint at it that it's being opened or not? Do you, do you go, who knows? But I'm just, here's what I'm really thankful. I, and, and I'm just thankful for the audience showing up. You guys are terrific. And it, it means the world They're showing us. up, my goodness. We had really good numbers again this week. Yeah. And Peter's head is going to be very swollen. Um, <laughs> it won't even fit on. It won't even fit on the screen when you interview him. Mark. He'll only but, be able to film in the saloon because it has double that's doors. That's right. <laughs> but, but, but just, um, and it doesn't even necessarily mean that that you love every aspect of what's going on. But we thank you for your your interest and your devotion your loyalty, it, it, mean, it really does mean the world to us. And it's why we're here and it's why we do what we do. It's a pleasure, so thank you. Well, it's a pleasure for us to un unpack these episodes with you. It just is fun to tease out these little moments and, and hear more of the backstory. So thank you so much, John, for making the time. And best wishes to Charlie. Mm -hmm. I hope that Charlie keeps eating a lot, <laughs> eating a lot, and we'll um, we'll be praying for Charlie too. Thank you. All right. So it's always a pleasure to tweet with you, Hardies, every uh, Sunday night at eight o'clock on the Hallmark Channel to watch our beloved show and to tweet with the hashtag Hardies. We'll see you. This has been Heart to Heart.